Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to this class of survival analysis and uh, today we are going to discuss first, first phase of survival analysis. So as you already know that the post prerequisite question which arises in anyone's mind would be why we need survival analysis. So uh, the reason behind the need of survival analysis is the fact that the rate of occurrence of any event in a study does not remain constant over time. For instance, the probability of time may rise suddenly or with the onset of a disease, then decline gradually as the time since diagnosis increase. The most appropriate approach in this situation won't be to calculate the incidence rate where we count, uh, we maintain an assumption of that the person years of observation are, uh, are the sufficient evidence because why because the calculations are based on the assumption that the rate under consideration remains approximately constant over time that means that 100 persons year of observations are treated identically whether they may involve 100 subjects followed over one year are 50 subjects followed over two years so the incidence rate cons uh, incident rate in terms of persons per year won't be giving us the actual uh, trend in terms of survival so it will be always be preferred to assess the survival of uh, the outcome how many uh, patients survive over a particular time duration this is the agenda that's why we need survival analysis and what are the core things we should keep in mind so the first foremost thing would be the estimation of survival it requires case identification in that case identification clear and well-defined starting points and similarly the clear and well-defined outcome so these are the three requisites and uh, if we focus more on case definition I am going to the example of cancer histology clinically confirmed specimens are uh, case definitions and clearly well defined starting point now in terms of starting point the most conventional thing of using uh, in uh, starting points would be the date of diagnosis of a cancer disease is the uh, well-defined starting point because there is always a latency period there is always a background history so instead of using those different variations we can set up a date of late date of diagnosis of a disease and the third thing would be a clearly defined outcome so the outcome in most cases we rely on alive or dead but the outcome may be a reoccurrence of a disease or any other thing so it could be this death or it could be a reoccurrence so the starting point the occurrence of outcome of interest or the date of last contact is known as survival analysis so it's basically the duration of the starting point and the occurrence of the outcome of interest or the date of last contact is the survival analysis we are going to elaborate the date of last contact in subsequent slides next foremost thing would be the interpretation of the results of survival study depends upon the length of time each person must follow now this is important that the length of the time is the actual factor which is going to help us in ascertaining the survival analysis of a uh, patient or an individual regarding to the study question so a typical survival study involves a patient accrual period which means the patients are recruited and then their follow-up is initiated for so a follow-up period and then there is a closing point so three things are important accrual period follow-up period and a closing date for that respective analysis now what is the censored data in group actually uh, it is quite obvious that in a closed group there will be a, there are almost some subjects which are very difficult to treat or which are very difficult to follow not treat which are very difficult to follow for a certain period of time and so that that information will always remain as incomplete they may be lost in terms of uh, address change they may be not, uh, we are unable to follow them or we lost contact in them so those 
those set of individuals are called censored groups because we are not sure whether they are alive or dead but we have some information about their lost contact all right so in order to deal with those uh, with those individuals and if we subtract the number of such individuals that is going to affect the survival analysis so we we uh, assume that 0.5 percent of them at any time point in the year remain alive or they we lost their contact so the formula over here if you look that is the probability of dying if we are interested to know is is equal to d d means death divided by n is the total number of individuals engaged in that study minus 0.5 into l now this l is actually those censored group individuals which are being multiplied by this factor of 0.5 and then we are going to calculate the probability of dying okay of for the respective cases since i am talking about cancer so that's what i am dealing with in the subsequent examples next is the preferred consecutive follow-up intervals now this is right so here comes the tricky portion this is an example in this example we are going to study the samples are a certain of uh, breast cancer individuals so it is basically a follow of 40 women diagnosed with breast cancer in a hospital over the time duration of 1989 to 93 then the data is pretty much hypothetical now if you look closely there are two ways the data has been presented the first and the foremost style of presentation over here is that if we instead of uh, writing that data in terms of the hospital records uh, if we arrange this data in terms of year of diagnosis so we could see that 189 to 9, 1993 is the amount uh, the year information year of diagnosis and then we are following it to 1995 so this is the one way of presentation of a data the second way is that the number of complete years since diagnosis that how many of individuals had already been diagnosed in the past seven years and then we are going to use it the third most interesting way of uh, presenting this data would be somewhat like this that is the year duration and now these are the number of samples 40 individuals and this is the uh, year of their diagnosis now a represents a life d represents death so if you can see that the 31 number study id joined this study uh, in the first year and has expired in the same year third same story 35 same story and so so on so forth so on so this means that the age of year uh, and that the number of completed years since diagnosis are gradually been inserted in this column and uh, it's not that the 31st was the foremost one who joined this study it is actually the duration of their duration of their uh, status length of observed survival time which we have presented over here okay so it's the length of survival time we are discussing over here now one week if we are interested this is a complete full data story and survival time with dna status you have shown now if we select this data and we are just focusing on the two years survival time then if you, uh, you see i have taken a picture out of that and over here we see that there are certain events which are happening so the interpretation of the results of survival study depends greatly upon the length of time which person was followed up uh, typical survival as we already know involves the patient's accrual period during which patients are recruited and their follow-up is initiated and now in this case if you look closely it is that that some uh, if we restrict our time duration to the first two years we will see we will see that there's certain group of individuals like the patient number 13 patient number 13 6 40 39 38 34 now the numbers which i am mentioning over here patient number 13 if you see there is a a over here in front of 13 but is that of 
after one year till the last of two years completion is missing all right similarly 40 39 38 and 34 so that means that the cohort is reduced from 40 to 34 why because there are such six number of individuals who whom we were unable to track so the probability of the probability so the probability of dying in the first two years from this disease would be calculated as d calculate the number of d's 10 divided by 34 is equal to 29 right so this is the probability of dying with the disease if we are not censoring our data right but what if we censor our data how it's going to look like like instead of using 10 divided by 34 we also engage those uh, the probabilities so the sensor deviation is going to be written somewhat like this so the probability of time t is equal to the 10 deaths divided by n is equal to 40 minus 0.5 into what is the number and the number was that there were uh, six women who lost contact in the first two years so six into 0.5 is going to give us a value and then the total probability of dying would be 27 percent so this is the data with same sort information for the two years so it's the two percent reduction in the probability of dying based on an assumption that the six women who were who lost in contact were placed into the sense and information data that's why i have given you this example in a continuation now how to write it look over here there are 40 sample there are 40 individuals at the start of the study 10 died 6 censored and 24 alive all right so that's the total number the censored individuals would be 56 now let's calculate the data of the census study for three years duration okay so for three years duration if we look closely these are the these dots indicate the number of deaths now in over here the deaths total would be styling around 14 okay and the lost contact now this lost contact would be if you see A's 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so the total loss contacts are nine in number so uh, we are going to put these values in the formula d is the total deaths that's in our case is 14 after two years now it includes the first year and second year data so we are extending it till third year loss is equal to nine and is equal to 17 so the probability of dying in intervals for two years the probability of dying in the first two years the probability of dying in the first two years would be equal to four is equal to this value that is 14 divided by 40 minus 0.5 into 9 so it is giving us a value of 39 percent this is the probability of dying individuals dying over this year of durations all right let's roll on to the next slide over here if as i told you earlier that the consecutive follow-up intervals are always providing us an advantage now if you look over here the individuals mentioned are 40 they are at the day one uh, enrolled are entitled for the study and uh, within the first year duration which is mentioned in this time frame the study says that there are near zero individuals lost contact however we have reported seven deaths so uh, seven deaths were reported in this incidence and now to calculate seven deaths estimation what was being done it is basically the numbers have been distributed like this that the period is divided into three one years interval and now the survivor from one year go to the start of the next year so the 40 individuals out of that 47 died 33 remain now the survivors of the first study go into the beginners of the next 
here. So 33, we lost 6, and then when 7 died unfortunately, so the total is 24. And the 24, out of 24, 4 died and 3 uh, lost contact. So the leftovers are 17. Are you getting my point? Hot. So the consecutive follow up interval is like this. Now, if I want to estimate the probabilities on a tree, now this is the estimation of probabilities. It looks horrible. It's looked like a huge number of calculations are going on, but it's pretty straightforward. Like the probability of a subject dying in year one would be how many deaths we have observed? Seven deaths in the previous slide. Over here we have noticed seven divided by the total number of individuals at the start of the study were 40. So 7 by 40 is going to give us 0.175, which is we have written over here. And now, what is left over here is 33. 7, 40, 33. Now, if we use 33 over here, 6 of the number of individuals who died. So 6 into 0.5 minus, and, and this value is minus, and then 33 minus this one, 30. Uh, so we are going to get a value that is 3, uh, not over here, 30 is, uh, and then and the probability of dying in second year is 3 by 30 is equal to 0 0.1. So this is the probability of an individual dying in the second year. Now the probability of surviving. So surviving is pretty straightforward, 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.10, that is equal to 0 0.9. Third year. Again, the same straight. So we are using the probability of dying during the third year. So out of here, we're going to assume that three people individuals died. So four in four over twenty-four, four over twenty-four, four individuals died, and the total number is twenty-four. And the sensor data is three individuals. So we are getting a number which is point one seven eight. So that's why it is written over here, and then we we'll subtract 0.178 from 1. We are going to find the probability of survivors uh, for 3 years duration, right? Now in the next term, it would be uh, what you can say the trick is that if the probabilities of dying in the area in the first year, second is known, can we possibly do the same stuff of probability of dying apart from the subjects probability of dying during the first year it's to mean the same 0.175 and the probability of dying during the second year could be during the second year could be estimated by using 0.82 into into 0.1 it is 0 0.083 now this probability is those number of individuals who remain disease who remain um, probable of dying during the second year. Now the probability of dying during the third year would again be counted in terms of these probabilities addition and multiplication 0.825 into 0.9 into into 0.178 that will give you a data of 0.132 if we subtract we are going to get some information and if we want to alive calculate the life ratio we are going to add 0.825 into 0.9 into 0.88 is equal to 0.61 now these values are important why these values are important because these values are going to give us a data information and if we draw a graph it will be helpful for us to know the pattern of uh, survival Remember the first image we have shown in the class? That first image is the most core, key and representative data we are going to discuss in the next class. Don't be afraid of the uh, equations. Just try to practice them more and more. The more you practice, it will be more easy for you. So this is what we studied in terms of estimation of survival. That the consecutive follow up periods, probability of dying of subject, and probability of dying of an individual during the course is important. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Allah.